It's been a whole month since Lusso learned about Substance X during this time. He has made his way from the 31st floor to the 40th floor, nearing the boss room. However, something about the room gives him an uneasy feeling. To gather more information about the undead, he decides to head to the Adventurer's Guild. As Lucille stands in front of the guild, a young girl approaches him and clings to him. Lucille wonders what she needs. He thinks it might be a good idea to take her inside the guild to avoid sparking any rumors about him. Once inside, Lucille is greeted by Nanela and Monica. He's puzzled about why they are here, but before the girls can explain, the adventurers at the guild grab Lucille and take him to help heal the injured. The scene shifts to Lucille tending to the injured at the guild. While healing, he asks Milty to check on the frightened child who had sought his help. Lucille continues to heal others and wonders about the presence of Monica and Nanela in Capital. He speculates if they are here to share news about getting married. After finishing the healing, Milty urges Lucille to hurry to the slums with the young girl. Lucille wonders if it's an urgent matter. Nanela and Monica mention that they intend to accompany Lucille. Lucille contemplates the potential danger of the situation. However, the guildmaster reassures them by announcing his intention to join them, ensuring their safety. The scene shifts to Lucille in the slums, where he notices a group of injured individuals. His curiosity peaks as he wonders about their circumstances. The guildmaster explains that they are representatives from the independent state of Eunice. Monica chimes in, explaining that they fell victim to an attack by a band of thieves when they neared the border. Given the large number of injured, it's impractical to transport them to a clinic. Suddenly, one of the injured men regains consciousness and launches an attack on Lucille. Fear sets in as Lucille wonders if he's destined to meet a similar fate as in the past. However, he resolves not to let history repeat itself. He taps into his newfound powers, particularly his area heal ability, to mend the injuries and restore the well-being of everyone present. Concerned, the girls inquire about Lucille's well-being, and the guildmaster offers an apology for not being more vigilant. Lucille reassures them, emphasizing that no one could have foreseen such an unexpected attack. He believes that the Beastman was likely trying to protect the others in their group. Lucille uses his healing powers to mend the injuries of those present. To his surprise, he discovers that the man who had attacked him earlier is the father of the girl who had sought his help. The slum dwellers, witnessing Lucille's abilities, plead for his assistance as well. Lucille, however, clarifies that he can only treat their injuries, unable to offer more comprehensive aid. Nanela raises the question of whether Lucille will provide his services for free, but Lucille explains that he has rules to abide by. He decides to heal everyone under the guise of a charitable act and also purifies their water source, which had been causing a plague. Lucille takes the opportunity to educate them on the importance of regular hygiene and sanitation practices. In response to Lucille's kindness, the residents begin to cheer for him, dubbing him Saint Weirdo. Lucille is left wondering how they came to know this peculiar nickname. Then we see Lucille dining at a restaurant with Nanella and Monica. Nanella shares her feelings, admitting that she was deeply concerned when Lucille was stabbed. Lucille appreciates the care he's receiving, believing it might provide him with the motivation he needs to face the level 40 floor boss in the labyrinth. Curious about their presence in the capital, Lucille inquires if the Adventurer's Guild has been facing difficulties due to the absence of their receptionist. Monica explains that Lucille is correct, two of the receptionists are about to get married, which is why they decided to visit the capital before becoming occupied with their wedding preparations. Lucille is surprised by this news and asks about the identities of the couple. Manila informs him that it's Melina and Bernal. Monica adds that they had mentioned this in their letters to Lucille, but he reveals that he never received any letters in return, despite writing to them consistently. Both Monica and Nanella admit that they, too, never received any letters from Lucille. This revelation leads Lucille to ponder whether his mentor, Brood, also missed receiving his letters. Monica reassures him that Brood did receive his letters and was genuinely pleased by them, but these letters were the only ones they received. The scene transitions to Lucille questioning the Guildmaster about this communication issue, and he discovers that the Guildmaster had simply forgotten to send the letters. Elites, with curiosity in his eyes, questions Lucille about his relationship with the two receptionist girls. Meanwhile, in the background, some fellow adventurers are chatting about Lucille and the receptionist girls, speculating if he's dating both of them. They find it quite fortunate for someone with an unusual nickname like his. Lucille, on the other hand, reflects that he didn't exactly choose to have such a nickname. Lucil then responds to Elites, expressing how important both receptionist girls are to him. He credits them for his journey to becoming a healer and for helping him endure the challenges of consuming Substance X and surviving Brood's training. Curious about their stay in the capital, Lucil asks the girls how long they plan to be there. The girls inform Lucil that they'll be around for three days, to which Lucil expresses his desire to spend as much time with them as possible. In a friendly gesture, the girls link their arms with Lucille's and mention that they've heard about injured adventurers in the training hall, prompting them to take Lucille along to assist in their healing. 
Wuso modestly downplays his role during the girl's visit, mentioning that they mainly focused on treating adventurers. To make up for the letter mishap, the guildmaster threw a grand party, and time flew by before he knew it was time for their departure. Lucille expresses his happiness at their visit and hopes to return the favor by visiting them next time. The girls eagerly anticipate his visit, and with that, they bid their farewell. The scene then shifts to the man who previously stabbed Lucille, offering an apology. Lucille, in his usual kind manner, assures there's no need for an apology as he has fully healed. Lucille learns that they made this journey to establish a healer's guild in Yenis and that their meeting with the Pope went smoothly, largely thanks to Lucille's aid. They express their gratitude for his help, and the girl introduced earlier as Sheila joins them. Sheila's father reveals her vocal cords were damaged in an accident, and Lucille commends her as a hero for her role in saving people. Secretly, he uses a healing spell on Sheila, hoping it might help her regain her voice in the future. The representatives depart, and Lucille contemplates his progress. He informs Lumina that he has reached the 40th floor of the labyrinth but is still unsure if he's ready to face the enemy within the boss room. Lumina calls him a coward, not as an insult but an acknowledgement that caution isn't a negative trait. She suggests they spar to assess his abilities. Almost a year since Lucille joined the church, Lumina wants to gauge his improvement. The training commences with Lumina attacking Lucille, who defends with his shield. Lucille throws a knife, surprising Lumina with his progress. She acknowledges his impressive growth and continues their training. The scene concludes with a tired but determined Lucille after their intense practice session. Lucille had improved over the past year, but Lumina advised him not to take on super strong opponents just yet. Lucille appreciated Lumina's guidance and felt more confident about his path. Curious about Lumina's change in tone, Lucille asked why she was being more casual. Lumina explained that this was her natural way of speaking, she usually sounded tough but could be herself at times. Lucille found this friendly tone suited her well and welcomed more casual conversations. The next day, Lumina and the Valkyrie Regiment headed for the border, leaving Lucille to continue his journey. Six months passed, and Lucille felt ready to face the challenges of the 40th floor main chamber. Catalia handed Lucille a letter from Lumina, explaining that it was meant for him when he reached this stage. In the letter, Lumina revealed that on the 40th floor, Lucille would encounter formidable adversaries who had combined their exceptional skills. Lucille realized he had a tough fight ahead and prepared to confront these powerful foes. Using purification magic against the undead didn't work, so Lucille resorted to his knife, hoping to deal enough damage to defeat the merged adversary. The knight had Lucille cornered, but Lucille had a clever plan. He created a barrier using Substance X to push the knight away. This worked, and Lucille took the opportunity to try various attacks on the undead. When those didn't work, he retreated to a safe zone he had set up with Substance X. A week passed, and Lucille realized that his food supply was running low. He feared he might not survive this ordeal. Lucille also started to doubt if this labyrinth was fake because the attacks he faced were very real. Even though his level didn't seem to increase, the danger was real. Lucille knew he had to win this battle or face dire consequences. He had learned the undead's attack patterns and was determined not to die, especially with people he cared about waiting for him. Remembering Broad's advice that beheading was the key, Lucil successfully decapitated the undead, defeating it. In the process, he found a mysterious book the undead had dropped. With no way out of the main chamber, Lucil had to continue his journey. He attached a barrel of Substance X to himself as a monster repellent and pushed forward, determined to reach the 50th level of the dungeon. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to subscribe our channel and check out other videos.